My entitled boss plans on firing me after I'm asked to hire a fourth member of our team who would in this case be my replacement that I would be training. So I decided to get some revenge and I hired the worst person for the job who didn't know what they were doing and who was very sloppy when it came to customer service. And as a result, my department tanked once I left and my manager ended up getting fired as well. And I've never been happier to get revenge on somebody in my life. Here's what happened. I first off want to say that all names in this story are fake. So this was a small company and our team of three were best described as tech support for our clients, but it went a bit further than that. I usually helped with setting up databases and also advise clients from time to time if they would benefit from upgrading their plan. As normal with tech support, we get tickets from the clients and would work away with them one by one. I like the challenging problems and usually tried to work hard at them and it just so happened that my coworker Caroline liked the more standard problems and enjoyed doing something she already knew over something new every single day. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. And as you might imagine, we made a great team and had this kind of unwritten rule about who took which tickets. It was a win-win situation for me, Caroline, the company, and the client. Well, that is until I got a new boss by the name of Bob. He immediately noticed that I was working far fewer tickets than Caroline. I tried to explain to him how not every ticket is the same workload, but because he wasn't very tech savvy and didn't understand half the stuff I was doing, he did not understand what was going on. Also, around one month later, we got a huge new client, and I spent a week on site setting up all the databases and stuff that they needed. This drew down my monthly average ticket numbers even further, so it only made sense that I didn't have a lot of tickets under my belt. Now, if Bob would have only had half a brain cell, he could have figured out why that was. But now came something that I honestly did not expect from Bob. He said we need more help on the team, and he was approved to hire a fourth member for our team. Now, I was excited. We all were. We had this new huge client, and things were not yet running smoothly, and our company was expanding fast. So this actually made sense. And he specifically asked me to basically do the recruiting process, as well as to work the new guy in, which I was completely happy to do. And honestly, this should have been my first clue, that my boss was trying to set me up for failure by essentially making me train my replacement. Now, that same night, Hans gives me a call, which is weird because Hans is not a caller, he's more of a texter, and he basically said, you should come over to my house tomorrow because I have some beers that need drinking. So the next day, I get to Hans's house, and we're just talking about normal stuff. We see each other maybe once per month and have a big overlapping friend pool, but this time, it was just me and him drinking beers, no other friends around. After some beers, he mentioned that he just updated his resume the day before and that everyone should always have an update resume on hand. He then asked me if I had an up-to-date resume and I felt this was a weird question and I had an idea where this was going so I said no. But then I asked him well should I have one updated? Is there something that you know that I don't that you might want to tell me? He then says well I'm just saying that everyone should have a resume ready but I couldn't tell you if Bob is thinking about replacing you. But I also couldn't tell you that Bob is thinking about letting you go. And when he said that I knew exactly what he was trying to say. So I thanked him very much for the beers and I left shortly after that. So now I know I'm going to be fired and I have a suspicion that Bob has just asked me to hire my own replacement and train him to do my job so that he can take it. And this is where my sweet malicious compliance and revenge comes into play. I fully comply with hiring a fourth member of the team and also pick one that's best suited for what Bob wants because Bob wants high ticket numbers. So I'm thinking I need someone who's not so smart with a sloppy attitude that does not care if the customer is happy. After after all, customer satisfaction was not important to Bob when he talked about my ticket numbers. So I get right on it. Many people apply, some good ones, but I weed those out very quickly. Resumes with lots of spelling mistakes and very little experience in my sector are the ones that I invite for an interview. The interview stage is trickier because now Bob and someone from HR is sitting in with me, but I am still asking most of the questions and giving my opinions on the candidates. But because I weeded out the good ones, once, when Bob makes a decision, he just chose the best of the worst, and in my opinion, not even one of the best, because one applicant was quite good, but I asked him stupid questions that did not even make sense, and when he could not answer them, I made him look really bad. I then advise one candidate he ends up picking, because he will work very fast and will get a ton of tickets done. At this point, I have another job lined up in four months' time, but I wanted to get fired by Bob to get some sweet, sweet severance pay. After 
After two months of training the new guy, I have just shown him how to do basic tickets, which he can do quite well and fast, but makes a lot of mistakes. And I have let the hard ones slowly build up. Carl, my other co-worker, notices this, and as he would be the only one after my firing to be able to handle these complicated ones, I let him in on what I am doing. Now, as chances will have it, he had just gotten an offer from another company, and since he also did not like Bob, he already decided that he will take the offer, but said that he could sit on it for a few weeks and time it with my firing for maximum destruction. Then I tell Bob I'm done working in the new guy, and a week later, he tells me he sadly needs to let me go, because my numbers had not gotten any better. He actually used against me the fact that I had not been doing many tickets while I was training the new guy. I mean, honestly, how stupid can Bob be? He also wished me a lot of luck finding a new place to work with my work ethic. Now, this had been the day I was waiting for, and I just thanked Bob and reminded him of the four months worth of severance that I was now owed, and also two months worth of vacation I had not yet taken and carried over, and I was now entitled to get paid out. As I am heading out, I tell Carl what had just happened, and he opens his drawer with a signed two weeks notice and walks into Bob's office. My girlfriend had vacation time left, and we decided to leave for a four-week holiday to New Zealand the very next week. And while I was there, I proposed to her. I started my new job one month after returning from New Zealand and even got a nice pay bump and an actually good boss. I made sure to thank Hans again and he kept me in the loop on how my old department went down the drain very quickly and Bob was let go sometime after that. When that happened, they actually approached me for taking his job, but I declined, even though that would have been the ultimate middle finger straight to Bob. Fast forward to five years later, which is the present day, and I started a company together with Hines, doing pretty much the same work, but in a different city. And so far, everything is going really well. You have a very good friend when it comes to Hans. He not only had your best interest in mind, but he gave you a solid heads up that, hey, Bob is going to fire you. And also, this Bob guy is an awful manager. He's one of those managers that only looks at numbers and nothing else. He doesn't realize the fact that you work very hard, and you're the one who practically carries that off. Office. Like seriously, you had a good thing going, you knew what you were doing, and you had a solid system down. But this Bob guy just had to come in and screw everything up. So honestly, good for you for getting out of there while you could, as well as basically ruining Bob's career at that job. Because this guy let you go over stupid reasons. And in the end, he got exactly what he deserved. If you like Am I the Jerk, you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out, link down below in the description. Also, go to amithejerk.com slash submit if you would like to submit your own stories. Am I the jerk for calling my daughter's father spineless as well as his girlfriend creepy after they named their newborn the same name as my daughter? Here's what happened. So for a little bit of context I ended up getting pregnant with my 10 year old daughter during a drunken hookup with a friend in my mid 20s. Not the most glamorous or flattering truth but it's the truth all the same. When we found out we decided to keep the child and co-parent while remaining friends. We were never a couple and we didn't want to be one either. Four years ago, he began to date his long-term girlfriend and they both moved in together last year. She got pregnant and I've been supportive to the both of them as much as I could without crossing any lines. I've encouraged my daughter to help out whenever she's staying with them during the pregnancy as well as to simply behave. I've also made it clear that I want the children to have a close relationship despite having different mothers. I've even said that if they're comfortable with it on nights that I have my daughter, if they ever want to time alone, I'll babysit once they have the baby so my daughter can spend time with her sibling. All in all, I thought everything was great and I was excited for my daughter to have a sibling as she's always wanted one, but I had no interest in having another child. Three days ago, my friend and his girlfriend had a daughter. They asked me to bring my daughter to the hospital to meet her little sister yesterday along with other people of the family, so I did exactly that. But when they introduced us to the baby, I was shocked. They used my daughter's name for the baby. Baby. She didn't seem to have any issue with this. When she introduced this baby bold as brass, my friends seemed uncomfortable and wouldn't look at me directly. So I asked them what they were playing at. At which point, my friend's father said that he would take my daughter down to the cafeteria to get something to eat. And she left with them. My friend told me to calm down and not overreact while his girlfriend told me that she didn't see the issue and it was just a pretty name. I asked them if they had named the baby for my daughter, trying to understand the logic here. But his girlfriend said that no, it was just a pretty name and she liked it. I then asked if they plan on using a nickname or some kind of middle name when 
someone addressing her on a daily basis, and her response was that she didn't see a need for that. I told them that they were being ridiculous and that they couldn't do this. I then told his girlfriend that I found this incredibly creepy, and then I told my friend that he was spineless and if he was happy to go along with this. He tried to claim our daughter could use a nickname or something like that, but I shut that down immediately, asking why it was more reasonable for a girl who was used to that name for a decade to shame her name compared to a baby who had no concept of what a name was yet. His girlfriend then told me I was being a jerk for talking to her like that after she just gave birth and then asked the nurses to remove me, saying that I was being disruptive. Now, maybe my temper is running a bit too hot and I was maybe a bit too harsh on her after she just gave birth, but this is all just so weird. So am I the jerk in this situation? What should I do? I don't think you're the jerk at all. The fact that the father of your daughter, as well as your former hookup, is naming his new child after his current child is incredibly weird. Like seriously, is it that hard to name that baby something else? Literally any other name would have been appropriate, but they're like, no, let's pick the one name that my daughter has. It's just so pretty. Like, what are you talking about? That's insane. You can't just do that and not expect some kind of problem later on in life. And of course, the kid is not going to have any problem with it because guess what? She's 10 years old. She doesn't understand how weird this is yet. And she hasn't even seen the tip of the iceberg when it comes to how blatantly annoying this is going to be in her life. Literally, she has a sibling now with her exact same name. It's almost like the father is trying to have like a do-over because it really seems like because he now has a girlfriend who he can now stick around with, he wants to try again with a baby of the same name. I don't know. It all comes across as really creepy. So I am 100% on the original poster side. So hopefully these people come to their senses and change the baby's name because honestly, this is going to be annoying for pretty much everybody involved. Am I the jerk for walking out of a wedding that I was a part of and ruining the day for everybody after I found out that the bride is the reason why my former relationship fell apart. Here's what happened. So I first want to start off by saying all names in this story are fake. I dated my ex-boyfriend John for four years and got serious enough that we started planning for our future. I thought we were pretty happy, but last year he dumped me pretty suddenly. I tried to figure out what went wrong, but he said it was personal and that I should respect his space. During this time, my best friend Stacy and her fiance Tom were my rocks, letting me crash at their place and just being overwhelmingly supportive and loving. When Stacy asked me to be her maid of honor, I thought it was a no-brainer and happily took on the task. Now, fast forward to what happened this weekend. The morning of the wedding, Tom asked me to meet him for breakfast super early in the morning before all of the festivities. Now, I thought it was weird, but I assumed he maybe wanted me to pass something on to Stacy. What happened instead was that Tom let me know that a few days prior, Stacy admitted to him that she had an affair with John, which was what led to my breakup. He said that Stacy wanted to come clean to start their marriage fresh and that he was forgiving her to move forward. He had gone back and forth between telling me and finally decided to spill the beans. I guess he had expected me to forgive Stacy as well because the affair was so long ago. But the opposite pretty much happened. I just walked out on the wedding. It ended up being such a huge mess because I was basically running the whole show. Stacy made me do everything, so she didn't even know what was happening at certain times or who to call. And not only that, but everyone realized that the maid of honor wasn't there. She had headshots and bios of the party on her wedding page. And news of the affair eventually got out because her cousin knew John. Stacy and Tom have both been slandering me online now, saying that I ruined their once-in-a-lifetime moment. Some of their friends are on their side, saying that I should have handled the situation more privately. And at least stuck out the wedding since it was so last minute. I personally don't know what Tom expected, but either way, I've been getting bombarded with text messages and I heard that Stacy has been so upset that she's had to take time off work, which does make me feel like a jerk, especially since I've just been ignoring her calls. So am I the jerk in this situation for walking out on this wedding? What should I do? I don't think you're the jerk at all. Maybe I'm heartless, maybe I'm a jerk as well, but this lady is the reason that John broke up with you. Not only did she ruin your relationship, but you also are finding out that John cheated on you. And that is so devastating. Like, seriously, that's not OK. 
okay. And the fact that she made you not only the maid of honor, but had you schedule all this stuff and coordinate all of the things associated with her wedding, while simultaneously trying to make amends for cheating on her husband, as well as ruining your relationship, with the expectation that Tom and yourself would just forgive her, is in my opinion unbelievably toxic. That is so messed up. She did that on the morning of her wedding. Like, is she crazy? If I was a maid of honor in that situation, there's no way I would have helped her out. I would have said, nope, you are on your own. I am not helping you. There's no way I'm letting this slide. And honestly, why should you? She ruined your relationship. The person you thought was your rock in this awful situation, she's the one that actually went behind your back and betrayed your trust. So no, I don't think you're the jerk at all. I would have done the exact same thing. That Stacy lady sounds like an absolute snake, and you have no obligation to try and help her out with anything. And honestly, you walking out on the wedding is better than you causing a huge scene. You could have waited until your maid of honor speech, and then you really could have let her know exactly how you feel. So no, you're not the jerk. You did this in the best way possible, and if she didn't want to ruin her wedding, then she should have had a different maid of honor, to be honest. It's her own fault for thinking this would be okay, and she has nobody to blame except for herself. My idiotic job gave the same punishment for someone being five minutes late as they would for someone being three hours late. So I decided to maliciously comply and work the system so that I would show up basically to work whenever I want. And there wasn't a single thing that my job could do about it. Here's what happened. So I'm working for a low-level corporation of about 450 employees. I've been there for five years and I've been rising to the top of my department's productivity levels. I mentioned this as it does pertain to the story. Management had a policy that latecomers would be penalized, but that lateness would be excused under some circumstances. I was good at my job, and I actually loved doing it, so I was more or less a dream employee. I would always show up to work 20 to 30 minutes early because I liked to sit in the lunchroom and prepare for my day. Management knew I was almost always early, so if I was late from time to time, and such instances were honestly really rare, they would let it slide, as there was always a valid reason. Now, for some other employees, this latitude was not applied. Chronically late employees would get written up and not have their constant lateness excused. They would complain, of course, but management was firm. They ran an actual meritocracy, where more productive employees would experience preferential treatment. Well, then the business got sold, and we got new management, an international corporation only interested in buying us up, stripping us down, and selling off the company. Now, of course, they denied this constantly, but the fact that over the next two years, they stripped us down and sold off the company proved that they were lying. New management comes in and has to make a bunch of idiotic changes. One of those changes is that no reasons for being late are going to be accepted, regardless of validity. Anyone who is five minutes or more late for work would be written up. So at the team meeting where this is explained, I asked, so if someone is five minutes late and someone else is three hours late, the punishment is the same? And they responded by saying yes. So from that day on, I stopped coming in early. I still went to work at my usual time, but I sat at a local coffee shop instead of my work's lunchroom. This meant my work missed out because in the past, I would often help by answering questions, even start work early if needed. And this is because I loved my job and the old management were wonderful bosses, but I was not doing that anymore under the new management. In fact, if something happened, like having unexpectedly bad traffic and I was going to end up being a few minutes late, I would just say, forget it. If being late three hours is the same punishment as being five minutes late, I would just decide to come in later. I would call work to tell them that I was delayed and then go out and have a leisurely meal in a restaurant or run some personal errands or go shopping or even see a movie. Depending on my mood and how awful the new management had been lately, what would have been, say, a seven-minute lateness on my part would end up seeing me roll in three hours late. Sure, it cost me a few bucks, but I made almost as much in bonuses than I did in hourly salary. So missing out on a few hours here or there didn't really bother me too much. I'd come in three or four hours late and my new bosses would be fuming, but there was nothing they could do except write me up for the basic tardy, which was the same penalty if I was even five minutes late. And to this day, this is still the funniest thing I've ever heard of in my life. Yeah, that's a really stupid system on management's part. Like seriously, in my opinion, especially if you have the proper management in place, it really can be just like a case by case situation. It doesn't have to be this super strict thing where you're like, okay, if you're even five minutes late, you're getting punished. But I honestly love the workaround and I love the loophole that the original poster found. They said, oh, five minutes and three hours is the same punishment? Cool, I'm gonna go see a movie or I'm gonna go to a restaurant 
restaurant and be like, peace, I'm out. And honestly, I would have done the exact same thing. If I knew I was going to be late, like absolutely knew for a fact there's no way I'm going to make it on time, then I absolutely would have done the same thing. I would have gone to get breakfast at a fast food joint. I would have sat and enjoyed myself. I mean, if there's no real punishment for being late, other than being written up or something like that, and it's only counted as being like a basic tardy write-up, then why on earth would anyone want to try and be on time? Like, go ahead, write me up. I'll just be three hours late. That honestly is hilarious to me, and it's proof that management really did not know what they were doing. Because how could they not see that this was going to be the case? How did they not know that someone was going to look at that system and be like, okay, I'm not going to do my job properly. I'm going to show up whenever I want, and there's nothing you can do about it. So honestly, with all things considered, good for the original poster for finding this loophole. This company does not sound the brightest. And honestly, with the way they were approaching being the management of this new company, they honestly kind of deserve to have something shoved back in their face. Thanks for watching. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications so you never miss a video. To finish listening to all the stories, check out the playlist at the top of the description. And if you want some vibey music to put on in the background, check out Easy Mode. If you like Am I the Jerk, check out Am I the Genius. Everything will be linked in the description.